So first we'll start with our calendar. Welcome back. Happy Monday. Today is exponential functions day number one. Wednesday is exponential functions day number two. Um, there is no homework number 31. That's the one for Wednesday, uh, which means that homework 30, the stuff we're going to assign tonight, isn't due Wednesday. It's actually due in our next class after Wednesday, which is going to be Monday a week from today. So tonight's homework assignment, you got one full week. Um, uh, coming up this week, uh, quiz number three is going to be due on Wednesday. I'm going to hand that to you today. You'll work on it on your own, bring it in and turn it in first thing Wednesday at the start of class, um, uh, which I think I said this before, makes it very important for you to show up on Wednesday, even though it's the day before Thanksgiving, because that's when you're going to turn in your quiz. If you absolutely cannot be here on Wednesday for some reason, you better make sure you email that quiz to me, like take a picture of it and email it to me by one o'clock on Wednesday. That is when the thing is due, whether or not you are here or starting your vacation early. Um, there are no classes on Thursday or Friday here at GCC. Uh, anybody have a Wednesday night class? That one is canceled this coming Wednesday, no Wednesday night classes. But Wednesday day classes meet as scheduled historically. Uh, GCC offices close on the Wednesday right before Thanksgiving at noon. So let me, let me state carefully, offices close at noon on Wednesday, but classes go on as scheduled. And so regardless of whatever rumors you might hear floating around on Wednesday, we are meeting at one o'clock this coming Wednesday, even if you hear that some things have closed or some things have canceled, not us, okay? All right, um, okay, so I think that's good. Let's take a look at uh, the new stuff here. Um, so uh, the basic idea with this particular problem is that we are going to be increasing, we're going to get a salary increase of 3% per year every single year. Let's do some calculations here. Um, so if we start with a salary of 40560 we take 3% of that number. Turns out 3% of that number is 1217. Anybody see what we're doing? 0 0.03 times the... 40,560. And if you take your $1,217 raise and you add it to your salary, you get your new salary, 41,777. All right. And so then the very next line, I need to take 41,777 and take 3% of it. So if I multiply that by 0.03, anybody have the number for me? Good. Oh, what's this one? Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, what is it? Okay, so 1253.31, that's the increase, that's your raise. You have to add that increase to what number? To the 41777. Don't go back to the beginning, you go back to your updated salary. So we add the 1253.31, and what do we get? Okay. Uh, is the first one rounded? Yeah. So the directions should be clear and say where we should round to. Okay. And if I wanted to find my salary the next year, I would take 3% of that 43,000 number and add it to the 43,000. Good. What do you notice is happening? about the amount of the raise going from one year to the next. It was 1217 and then it was 1253. It's increasing. It wasn't the same dollar amount. How come? It's a steady 3%. Why isn't it just the same dollar amount? It's because the pay is increasing. And so you take 3% of a bigger number each year. And so your actual dollar raise is more every year because it's 3% of a bigger and bigger number. And so uh, you don't need to sketch this thing down here. But if this was time and this was the overall salary, including your raise, um, so let's say that uh, at zero we had, uh, what was the salary, 4560? So let's just ballpark and say that's the point 4560. If it was going to be a constant increase in salary, then one year later you'd make another 1200, and another year after that you'd make another 1200, and another year after that you'd make another 1200. Now what kind of a graph would we get? is a line, a linear graph, but that is not the case because maybe the first year you make 1,200, but then the next year you're gonna make 1,500 more. And so I go over one year, but now I gotta go up 1,500 more than I did before. And then the next one, I go over one year, but then I have to go up 
even more than I went up the previous year. And so every step to the right is a bigger step up than before. And so we get this thing which is clearly increasing as I walk from left to right. But what about the rate at which it's increasing? It's increasing what? Slower, slower or faster, faster? Faster and faster, right? It is increasing faster and faster. Okay, and uh, the next uh, two sections are all about this kind of a thing where you grow by the same percentage, 3% per year, but then we can talk about what the uh, actual dollar amounts are doing. Okay, so on the next page, we'll start with our demo. Uh, the example explored in the preview exercises introduces us to the idea of a quantity growing at a constant percent rate, like 3%. Functions that increase at a constant percent rate are called exponential functions, and that's what we're studying today. Uh, let's see if we can develop a general formula for the median salary. Okay, so let's give this a shot. This is going to be just mostly reading here. Um, we started with 40,560, and we added 3% of 40,560, right? And we just came up with a number. But instead of just thinking of the number, we're going to start regrouping because it's going to help us in just a minute. Uh, what can you factor out of both terms? There's a plus sign in the middle. What can you factor out of both terms? 40,560, right? It's in here and it's in here. So when I factor 40,560 out, I'll put my plus sign in the middle. What's left in the first term? Oh, as the first second term is a 0.03, but the first term is a 1, right? We need a placeholder there. And then what's left in the second term is a 0.03. You buy that? Just factoring 40,560 out of both. And so we can rewrite that as 40,560 times 1.03. Okay. Now we already calculated that as a number. What was it? 41777? So is that was that this one? Okay, but I don't want to think about that number. I want to leave it in this form. Like I said, it's going somewhere good. So what are we going to do? Well, this is our new salary, the whole thing in this form. So you take 3% of that salary and you add it to that salary. Yes? That was the process in the tables. You take 3% of the new number and you add it to the new number. So we're going to take 3% of that new number. Uh, where is it? Here. That right there is 3% of the new number. Yes? And then we are going to add it to the new number, which is right there. So first part is just copying the new salary, plus the second part is 3% of the new salary. That's the raise. And again, this would be a whole lot easier for us if we just smushed the numbers together and got and did the arithmetic. But if we leave it in this form, something good happens. Um, what can I factor out? Here's a plus sign in the middle. What can you factor out from both of the terms? There is a 1.03. Anything else? And the 40,560. Do we see that that is all underlined in here? There's a 40,561.03 and a 40,561.03. And so we can factor those two things out. And so when we factor those two things out, uh, I'll write it here, but it's actually typed up above. 40,560 times 1.03 coming outside of big parentheses or brackets. What's left in the first orange thing? It's just a one because I pulled the whole thing outside. So one plus, and now in here, what's left from that when you factor out the orange is a 0.03. And so we put it right there. So we're just factoring out some kind of more complicated stuff, but it's just greatest common factor. And then we notice in the bracket is really what number? That's really 1.03. And then, hey, I've got 1.03 times itself, so let's write that in shorthand. So that's really 1.03 squared. And that's a nice compact way to find our salary two years into this process. So instead of doing the first two rows of the chart, you could just jump to the answer right here by typing that thing into the calculator. And if I wanted to go three years into the process, just make it cubed, right? 
And so this is the idea, is that we've now got like a nifty little formula. So if you wanted to do 10 years into the process, think of how big the chart would have to be before you get 10 years down the road. But if I just follow the pattern, it's 4560 times 1.03 to the 10. Right? And that's really easy to just type on the calculator. Can somebody give us an answer here? you're missing a digit somewhere. 54,000. 54,509. Okay. All right, so there we go. That's the salary 10 years down the road. Again, compare how easy that was. You just type it in into the calculator in one fell swoop, as opposed to filling in the first nine rows of that table in order to get the 10th row. Okay, so uh, there is something uh, kind of generic going on here. Um, if I wanted to create a formula for the salary T years down the road, the 4560 stays the same, the 1.03 stays the same, and the power becomes T. Okay. Makes sense, you're just doing, uh, the 1.03 is 103%, agree? 1.03 means 103%. So if you want to know what your salary is next year, well, it's 103% of whatever your salary is this year. And so that exponential thing, the 1.03 raised to the T, is just saying, well, you keep taking 103%, as many as uh, there are years in the process. And so this thing right here generalizes. So take a look. We're going to compare that to this. So S of T is going to be our salary function, where T is time and S of T is the salary that many years down the road. 4560, where did that come from? Well, that was the initial salary. And then 1.03, well, that was this thing that we're going to call the growth factor, 103%. Every year you take 103% of what you just had last year. We call that the growth factor. Okay, so um, making this even more general, an exponential function, this is a brand new definition, exponential function has this form, f of t equals a times b to the t, a times b to the t. Up above, what was playing the role of a? Yeah, the 40,000 or the initial salary, right? And then b, what was playing the role of b? That's the growth factor, which was the 1.03, right, see it? And then T is just time, and that's the independent variable. So A and B are constants. They're numbers, like 40,000 and 1.03. T is the independent variable. OK, um, so uh, just some vocabulary. I think we mentioned here uh, the growth factor is what we're calling here B. So the growth factor is called B. Um, and then uh, how did we get 1.03, like given the problem that we worked on? Why 1.03? Yeah, and so the problem in the original state just said 3% increase every year, right? How do you get 1.03 out of a 3% increase? Yeah, your whole pay. And so you take 100% of your original pay plus the 3% of your pay, right? And that's the 1.03. And so in general, uh, I guess not in general, but in this case, it was 1 plus 0.03, right? 1 plus 3%. And so it's always 1 plus whatever the the percent is, right? And so if we say that R is the percentage, the decimal representation like 0.03, then 1 plus R is the way to calculate that growth factor. So, um, so this is going to be an, an important formula for us. So 3% translates to a 1.03. 9% translates to a 1.09. It's always 1 plus, whatever the percentage is. Okay, um, moving on, uh, let's start filling some stuff in here in this table. So here are three exponential functions. Um, f of t equals 2 to the t, let's start there. Uh, I guess I didn't, um, okay, let's, let's just run down this first column here. 2 to the t, I'm going to ignore the 100 and the 200. 2 to the t, 
1.012 to the T and 0.886 to the T. Two to the T just means every time you get a number, you just double it times two times two times two. That's what two to the T means, right? So if you keep doubling, and I think we would all agree that the thing is growing, right? If your salary doubles every year, surely it is growing. In the next example, I've got 1.012. The 0.012, that's like the 3% that we had, right? The 0.03. And so uh, is this uh, raise more or less than the 3% raise? It's less, right? It's only like 1.2%. Right, but it's still a raise, and so your salary is still growing every year, right? That's growth. But suppose you were in the unfortunate position of having a salary given by the formula in the last row. 0. 0.886 as a percentage, that's 88.6%. That means if we wanna calculate your salary next year, all we have to do is take 88.6% of your salary this year. Is that a growth or is that a decay? That's a decay because you keep taking 88% of a number. And when you take 88% of a number, you're gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so this last guy right here is exponential decay. Looking at these numbers I'm circling right here, what is the cutoff number between growth and decay? It's one, one is the magic cutoff, right? If that number right there is bigger than one, then what kind of an exponential function is it? It's growth, anything bigger than one, like 103%, 1.03, bigger than one. But anything less than one, and it is a decay, like taking 88% will make something smaller and smaller. Okay, uh, let's start filling in here. We've got to calculate the uh, growth or decay factor, which is called B, and then the constant rate of change, which is called R. The growth or decay factor is just the number sitting in the parentheses. So in this first row, it is a two. In the second row, one point, no, it's not the 100, the 100, 1.012. Factor just means multiplier. 1.012 is the thing you keep multiplying by over and over again. And then 0.886 is the last guy. Okay, and then the percent rate of change. Uh, let's do the middle one first. What is the percent rate of change here? Yeah, I'm gonna write it as a first as a 0.012 and then write that as a 1.2 with what symbol? Percent, okay. So we know that that 1.012, that's one plus the R. It's always one plus the R, that's our magic formula. Uh, coming up to the first row, that two is supposed to be one plus R. How much is R? It is one, which is, if you want it as a percentage, 100%, right? Okay? 100% in this case. So uh, I'll write down the formula up here. Uh, this, this column right here is always one plus whatever the value of R is. And so that two includes the one already, it's always including the one and then plus something and the something is what we're after. Well, if it's supposed to equal two and all is said and done, that R must be a one. And that makes sense because if I tell you your salary doubles every year, which by the way, would be awesome, by what percentage do you gain every year? Is it, what is it? Is it 200? I wanna know what the gain is. You're doubling every year, but how much do you gain one year compared to the next? is 100%, right? Because you already had like your original salary and then you have to gain another original salary. So you gain 100% altogether, you have 200%. Okay, how about the last one? All right, so we got one vote for negative 11.4. I'll write it first as a negative 0.114, which becomes negative 11.4%. How do we get that? I know 0.886, how do you get the R? Is you subtract one. That's always how you get the R. Isn't that what we did from this 1.012 is we subtracted the one and from the two, we subtract one. So even if it's less than one, you still subtract one. So 0.886 subtract one is this negative 0.114.
Yeah, Pete. You need the R. Yeah, you need that negative. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, next page. Uh, it says here, there are really only two flavors of graphs of exponential functions of the form f of x equals b to the x. Notice that we don't have an a value in the front. That's okay. Just b to the x. So here are two examples. 2 to the x on the left and 1 half to the x on the right. 2 to the x looks an awful lot to me like the salary graph that we were, like, remember the points I plotted? It, it sure looks an awful lot like this. Um, and uh, right, and so this guy right here is just 2 to the x, and then the other one is 1 half to the x. And despite the fact that they look pretty different, they actually have a lot in common. A lot of things are the same here, and actually not very much is different. So um, let's take a look. Uh, what is the domain set of all x's you're allowed to plug in? It's all real numbers, right? Negative infinity to infinity. How about for the picture on the right? It's the same. The range, set of all y's on the left, starting from what number? Zero, zero to infinity. Do you think you get zero? No, we're, we got an asymptote here that we never, we never touch. And then how about the range on the right? Same, zero to infinity. All right, so I'll, I'll catch up to you guys here. So we said minus infinity to infinity for both. And then zero to infinity. Uh, and again, what do we say about zero in the range? It's not included. So is that a square bracket or a round? That's round. We don't get zero. Okay, and the next one says, is it one to one? Now we haven't used that phrase in a long time. Uh, one to one means it passes the horizontal line test, meaning that no matter what horizontal line you draw, it will never hit the graph more than once. Is that true? Or are there horizontal lines that hit this graph more than once? It's true. There's no way to draw a horizontal line that hits it twice. So it is one to one in the growth case on the left. And also, yes, one to one in the decay case on the right. OK, on the left, what is the y-intercept? Both coordinates, please. 0, comma, 1. Right. On the right, what is the y coordinate? Uh, the y intercept is 0, 1. Which I'm hoping makes sense. Again, to find the uh, y intercept, you let what equal what? x equals 0. So if I did f of 0 in this 2 to the x case, that's really saying 2 to the 0. And how much is 2 to the 0? One. I don't know if you guys remember that. Maybe from 096 or something. Any number to the zero is a one. A lot of people want it to be zero. It's not. It's one. And so even though this was a two, it makes no difference what it is, right? It's always going to, anything to the zero is always going to give you a one. So it's always going to have a, a y-intercept at zero comma one for both. Okay. Uh, how about the uh, x-intercept on the left? There's none. It's very close to the x-axis, but never hits. On the right, none. On the left, what is the horizontal asymptote? This is y equals 0, also known as the x-axis. So we'll put y equals 0. On the right, what is the horizontal asymptote? y equals 0. Like I said, even though the graphs look pretty different so far, answers are identical, right? They have a lot in common. Um, I know the next one here is end behavior. I'm going to add a question that was not listed here. I'll put increasing slash decreasing. That's an important one for us. OK, so on the picture on the left, for what x values is the function increasing? Negative infinity to infinity. This function on the left is increasing the entire time, meaning as you walk to the right, you are walking uphill the whole time. Even though it looks pretty flat on the far left, it is still slightly uphill all the time. So when you walk left to right, you are walking uphill. Um, so that means it is never decreasing. 
Okay, on the left, where is this function? Sorry, on the right, where is this function increasing? Not at all. Where is it decreasing? Everywhere. Every step you take to the right, you are falling. And so you are decreasing. Okay, so we can answer here. Uh, increasing on minus infinity to infinity, decreasing not at all, and it's just the opposite for the exponential decay. This one is decreasing minus infinity to infinity, increasing not at all. No, I think it's a separate question for end behavior. Yeah, so we're going to use some arrow notation here. On the left-hand picture first, when x goes to negative infinity, can you guys point right or left? Which way am I talking about? When x goes to negative infinity, point with one of your, yes, actually move one of your arms and your hands, little index finger, x going to negative infinity. Which way is that? Left, yes x going to minus infinity out here to the left. What happens to the y values when I go to the left? They approach what number? Close to zero, and that's our end behavior. So this is how we write it, you remember. It says x goes to minus infinity, f of x goes to what number? Zero, that's good. And we have to do the, the right-hand side of that same graph too. Okay, so then uh, I'm going to finish this one over here. As x goes to positive infinity, meaning to the far right, what happens to the y values? So the far of oh, the same picture I'm looking at here, the left-hand picture first. Increase to what? Infinity, right? No upper bound over there. F of x approaches infinity. So that's, Pete, that's how we describe the end behavior. Both sides, and now we have to do the other graph. Okay, so for this one, we'll start with x going to minus infinity, and then f of x is doing something, and then x goes to infinity, f of x is doing something. You can do either one first. Okay, so now focused only on the picture on the top right. As x goes to minus infinity, what happens to the y values? Up to infinity. And uh, as x goes to infinity, what happens to the y values? Zero. So end behavior is just reversed. Okay, so I think that's it for what we're going to say here in the demo, and you'll get your hands dirty and start actually doing some calculations with exponential functions on the next page. Uh, one thing I want to say on, in this first activity problem, uh, I would really like for you to write this thing right here, the R, as a decimal, not as a percentage. I think the decimal is more useful for us. So write those as percent as decimals, not percentages. And also you should note that the key has a mistake in it for that part A, the very first one. Okay, so raise a flag if you get stuck. I will walk around 